Jim, we mentioned Star Wars Visions. That trailer dropped last week, and it's relevant because we were talking about what's going to what's going to keep us occupied as Star Wars fans between Star War, between uh, the Bad Batch, which is likely going to wrap up here at the end of the month or, or early August, and then the Book of Boba Fett, which we won't get until December. Is there going to be anything in between? And uh, you threw out. Um, Star Wars Visions, this uh, anime or anime uh, anthology series that's 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 coming, and um, something else that you revealed, and we'll get into into the trailer, but something that you had mentioned, you'd speculated that you think that this will all drop at once. This isn't going to be something that's episodic in terms of you know a, a different episode or installment every week. Yeah, that's right. I, I think the whole thing will drop at once on September 22nd. And it'll be, yeah, more like Netflix than the traditional Disney Plus uh, release of weekly. Uh, they've given us no indication that this will be weekly. That's why I look at it as a big content dump happening on the 22nd. And we'll get all these shorts. There are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine different ones. And uh, they're done by all of these different anime studios. And I'll be the first one. You know, I, I, I'm not going to speak for Jason, but I, I, I think I, I probably can get away with saying that neither me or Mr. Swank are anime experts. And so we'll be looking at this presentation purely through a Star Wars lens. But we know that anime has lots of fans especially young fans young mm. fans of animation love anime and i grew up on certain levels of anime myself i mean i remember the old g-force which uh, mm. to me was very star wars-esque of a show and uh voltron of course uh those are a couple of things that i'm a little bit familiar with I did not grow up in the Pokemon era and have very little connection to Pokemon, but I have seen it. And uh, that's about as deep as I go. So you can tell I'm pretty much anime I, illiterate. This is, uh, this is probably more on the anime side than it is on the Star Wars side as far as its presentation goes. But I don't know. You know, I, I, I can't judge that. It's just so out of universe. It's, it's what if. It's alternate universe. It's Star Wars Infinities. It's not canon. And what I am seeing are some... Oh, sorry, meant to mute that. Go ahead. <laughs> what I'm seeing are some visuals that are associated with anime more than Star Wars, for sure. Like, there's a furry in here. There's a character who's, you know, like a furry, like, you know, like a, a an animal-human hybrid <laughs> creature. <laughs> a furry. I don't know how else I... to describe them, but I've seen similar characters like that in mm. anime in the past there right there we just yeah. saw a glimpse of it on the screen as jason's running the uh beautiful got beautiful visuals uh on some of these quick shots so i i think we're going to be in for like a really spectacular visual treat with some of this uh anime and um well it just, sounds to you know, me like they've ooh, got some of the major Tuscan studios readers. and the major anime artists you know that, that are working on this yeah. the the top of the top and they're all what, what's interesting is that you know despite the fact that in this in this uh trailer that you know many of them are not speaking english and it's subtitles but their passion for star wars it, it comes through and it's so clear that star wars has influenced them you know despite the language mm -hmm. barrier you know star wars is something that is so cross-cultural that these pe that these Absolutely. people grew up in, and, and and likely like our own filmmakers in the states and in in the west grew up and and wanted to have a a, a career in telling stories because of star wars and here they are getting a chance to use their medium to tell star wars and on the other side of the coin while these anime directors and producers may have been heavily influenced by star wars star wars itself was heavily influenced by japanese cinema specifically akira kurosawa we all know george lucas and what an impact hidden fortress had on star wars and we've seen the seventh samurai 
being replayed uh, over and over again in Star Wars storytelling, most recently on The Mandalorian. And uh, there's that little furry again. Uh, <laughs> see? See what I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, they, they, yeah. They, they have, uh, furries have a meetup at the Galloping Ghost every once in a while. You go <laughs> oh, in God, there, there's dude. all these... Yeah, be all careful. These costume characters running around. You see them at conventions a lot of times too. They freak out my son. Oh but, boy! Uh, <laughs> and he explained to me there's a seedier side of furries. Yes, too. there is. But yes, no, 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 whatever. <laughs> but as you see, like I mean, the imagery I'm seeing yeah. in this trailer—that was a weird Boba Fett thing. Um, the imagery I'm seeing harkens more of traditional anime to me than traditional star wars right and uh that's that's something that um you know i i, I worry I'm, I'm gonna have to grapple with but i don't think so because star wars is so universal and it's you know it's appeal at least to me yeah you could give a couple of uh munchkins from the wizard of oz some lightsabers and i'm enthralled sign me up you know yes I mean, it's, it could be like something literal like that um well it does but, seem to uh, be like you say jim it does seem to be more of an exercise in um showcasing the medium the art the style that is anime uh within a in, within a the, the framework of star wars it doesn't seem as though this is an attempt to expand the canon of star wars which is what we've come to expect from from disney plus from disney plus series uh they they contribute to the canon whereas this seems a little bit more experimental this, i'll tell you what this feels like to be honest with you this feels like something right up george lucas's alley because george oh, yeah. loves uh obviously loves uh asian culture and um and 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 when you take Star Wars and and sort of mash it up with with um, you know these different styles, it just it just this feels like something we would have seen from George. Uh, actually, feels more George Star Wars than it does Disney Star Wars in that sense because he loved these little kind of projects. Back when George owned the company, there was Star Wars Celebration Japan. It happened in two thousand eight. I got to go. So I was lucky to be there and actually experience Japanese Star Wars fandom. Boots on the ground experience Star Wars Japanese fandom. And those fans are just as passionate as fans anywhere else on the planet. They love Star Wars in Japan. There's no question about it. And I, ex I expect that sensibility to come through with uh these these cool new uh anime features uh shorts that are coming we have a list of titles mm. and uh i i you know i think uh, we'll try to assume some things out of these titles the first one up is the duel so i'm assuming that'll be a lightsaber battle of some sort the next one lop and ocho lop and ocho maybe some droids Hmm. On a wacky droid adventure. Uh, the next one is Tatooine Rhapsody. Okay. Now, one of the studios is producing a rock opera, a Star Wars rock opera, a Star Wars anime rock opera. All right, I'm in. Okay. I'm in. So you check it <laughs> off a few boxes there. I think yeah. Tatooine Rhapsody might be that rock opera. Um, <laughs> the Trigger Studio is doing The Twins and The Elder. So The mm -hmm. Twins, obviously a forced dyad of some sort, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Han, or I mean, Luke and Leia, or uh, Jason and Jaina, if you want to go EU. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Twins. And then you have The Elder, which is probably then about, a, you know, a more distinguished samurai type of Jedi living out his last battle, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, the next one, The Village Bride. So, uh, you know, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, Star Wars style. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I, unlikely. <laughs> um, Akakiri and two, T -O -T -0 B one from Science Saru Studio. Mm. Um, I think that might be... No specula... Uh, it might be a little play on words here that it might be 2B1, but... Like 2B1? I don't know. Oh, yeah, 2B1. And uh, Production IG is producing The Ninth Jedi. That's very the specific. Ninth Jedi. 
Very well, yeah. I mean, uh, what happened to the first eight? You know, is it uh, or is this like a double O nine situation or something? Yeah. So if I don't come O's. back, if I don't come back, double O eight will replace me. Double O nine. The Ninth Jedi. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we have some audio um, highlights from the trailer. These are members of the production team talking about Star Wars Visions. Star Wars Visions is going to be an exciting anime anthology series coming to Disney Plus in September. Japanese animation inspired a lot of the people at Lucasfilm over the years. We loved the idea of seeing Star Wars expressed in that way. Each one of these studios that we approached, we found hardcore Star Wars fans. They all had a story they wanted to tell. We were looking for something from the heart and soul of the individual creators. They are their visions through the lens of Star Wars. There are so many genres at play. Big and bold, romantic and sweeping, funny, comedic. We try to have some retro, vintage feeling. We feel so fortunate to be working with these filmmakers. There are so many opportunities to reflect Japanese storytelling in a Star Wars universe. Hmm. Yeah, this well, very interesting. you bring up a great point, though, Jim, earlier when you said that, you know, yes, clearly uh, Star Wars has influenced so many over the last 40 plus years, um, but it was Japanese culture, the Akira Kurosawa films and and this, the, the legend of the samurai that inspired George Lucas. So this is uh, sort of Star Wars coming home in a sense. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you're looking for the next installment in Star Wars uh, canon or the unfolding saga, I don't think you're going to find it here. I think what you're going to find oh, here no. is, is uh, as you said, a real visual treat. A lot of exciting, If you're particularly if you're a fan of anime, uh, you're going to love this. But um, uh, more likely a one and done. Now, what I'm curious about is the format of the show itself, if it's going to be like somewhat um documentary style like you'll hear from the creators and then it will show their short and then they'll roll mm. into the next one um or if it will be you know just a series of of shorts back to back to back to back i'm curious as to what that format's going to be we don't know well i think it'll be click and play for each for each one interesting short huh. there may be a play all option mm. and that is if they do the content dump all in one day a la Netflix. And that's really where I think they're going. They, 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 you know, they're never very clear about these kind of things. Lucasfilm always, always working in the shadows, these guys, and never really telling you everything you need to know. Because I don't think they want you to have any sort of preconceived notion going into the whole thing to begin with. Um, and just, you know, making a big point about hitting the platform on September 22nd. What you see you know, might be a surprise. <laughs> might be right. one episode for all I know. I because that unconfirmed stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, I really think that's how it's going to be. It's just going to be a content dump, and uh, you, you click and play, just that, like you did with the shorts, the sh like the Star Wars biome shorts or mm. the Star Wars. By the way, walkthroughs. If have you watched the biomes? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. See, I didn't. Uh, you know, we didn't really talk about it here on the show. Uh, if at all. And I, um, a, a friend of mine had said, have you watched these? And I, I said, no, I haven't. And I've been spending a lot of my evenings uh, out on my screened in porch and I've, I've hung a screen. I have a projector and uh, I put those biomes on and man, was that cool. Just the atmosphere, the, 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 the sound effects, the music, the scenery, um, that was something that was just a, it was a real treat. I didn't realize how cool it was. I, I didn't even really know what it was. And someone said, well, you should put that on. And uh, uh, they actually said to me that they, 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 they loop it sometimes, you know, or they wish that there were, sorry, they wish there was a loop option because they just love mm -hmm. the atmospheric uh, uh, elements of it. So that's very cool. But you're, you're, you're right. It may just be one of those big icons that you see on the Disney Plus home screen. You click on it. And then from there, you can jump around from uh, from short to short to short. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to see if there was some narrative just in terms of hearing from the filmmakers themselves, because I think for those of us, particularly in the West, it might be helpful to have that that context if they sort of 
you know, are able to tee it up. I need it teed up for me a little bit. I, I think. Sure, sure. Yeah, maybe a crawl. <laughs>